Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms. Today, we're gonna do a final update on the Ace XR training system. So it's been over a year since I got my Ace XR uh, as one of like the founding players that where we got to kind of test it out and give feedback. And I feel like I need to give an update on my thoughts on Ace XR and its benefit to improving your shooting. I have a previous video up. This was like the original one. It had a lot of moving parts, uh, like a, a like a fake slide kind of release action here where you could rack the firearm. The safeties worked, uh, and I did have a slide release over here. I did a whole video kind of on a controller overview on this, but you can't even get this one anymore. Um, so kind of pointless, uh, but they did listen to the feedback and they kind of designed it more towards a striker fired gun. This is the 320, the style, I think they call it the Vir Victus or I don't remember, Arctis, whatever they call it. This is the one that comes with, uh, or when you order it, you can get this one or the Staccato P. Uh, you can see that on your screen. So Staccato has obviously worked with them to get a handset for their style of pistol. And I think that's awesome. And I think that's a big miss we're going to go on kind of early or later on in the video about. So I was using it with the standard controller for a while, but I don't own a 320 and I don't really do competitive shooting with any striker gun. So I was looking for something that would match more like my Shadow 2. I wanted to have something that could be the similar ergos, grip angle, and the feel of my actual pistol I use for competition. Queue up 3D printing. I happen to have a 3D printer and McKenna Dynamics designed this and it is basically a one-to-one -one of my Shadow 2. Obviously the weight is not there, um, but there are hollow spots up front here and in the grip where you could throw your own metal weights in there. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I just don't feel the need to do it at the moment. Um, but it would be something that could help improve the training even better. So it also came with a different trigger to put in here. This trigger is much closer to the actual single action feel of my Shadow 2. So the closer you can get to simulating the feel of your actual firearm you compete with, the better your training is going to be from the VR game. Now here's the problem I have with this. Not many people do competitive shooting, also have a VR headset, and a 3D printer. Uh, there's a few of us nerds that have them, but access to this is very limited. And that's a huge miss on the firearm industry manufacturers. I'm not putting this on ACE's, Ace XR's problem here. This is not their problem. If Glock should be aware of this at this point by now. I mean, all the major manufacturers should be getting out there, supporting Ace XR and saying, hey, you're a competitive shooter and you use our platform, let's design a model that you can buy from either our website or ACE's website that will be a one-to-one -one size match for Smith & Wesson, for Glock, for Bull Armory, for CZ. I mean, they need to be out there. This is an application that's designed for competition shooters and that you really do need to have your own system out there for the controller to really get a good benefit out of it. Yes, it still works with training transitions, even though it's not the same firearm that you might use, but it's so much better when it can simulate the gun that you're actually competing with. This is me officially calling out all those manufacturers. Get off your ass, make a design for these, work with Ace XR for them. I don't know if there's some kind of red tape behind the business side of things where Ace XR won't let them do it, or if there's something with Oculus designing a pistol controller holder. I don't, I don't know the rules on it, but it, I feel like that's a huge miss. And it would be awesome if they could sell, Smith & Wesson could sell an M&P 2.0 version on their website and give a kickback to Ace XR to help keep development moving forward as they are constantly updating this game to have better training scenarios, to have better stages, and to make it so you can train even more in there and have more fun doing it. As far as supplementing dry fire, um, no, I still am on the same boat as this does not supplement actually taking your pistol out and dry firing at whatever makeshift targets you have, it, you're definitely gonna have better luck with 
getting your dot up there, pulling the trigger and making sure your dot's not moving and you're having better trigger control and understanding your pistol from draw to first shot or whether it's reloads, nothing can beat dry fire like using your real pistol. That's, there's no substitute for it. This can be a supplement and that's still my opinion. It cannot replace dry fire at all. Now here's where the real game changer is for your competition practice. USPSA, uh, since I don't currently have my VR set up like in my backyard to where I can draw basically a giant field of view to where I don't have to worry about running into anything and I can move and shoot and do USPSA stages like they were in real life. I currently do it in my basement so I really only have like a 10 foot circle radius that I use for the zone. So for USPSA it's decent for some uh, classifiers. Other than that, I, I haven't really had a huge amount of gain on that because those classifiers are fairly straightforward anyways. And there's not like a whole lot of stage planning. There's minimal transitions. It does help on some. I will give that if you run them and run them and run them. And then that classifier happens to be at your next match. Awesome. But there's just so many classifiers that USPSA has. I, I don't know how long it would take for Ace to get all of those built into the game and to have an easy way to get through them and to search them. Steel Challenge, on the other hand. I had never done Steel Challenge, didn't even really know what Steel Challenge was. Apparently it's eight stages and they're always the same stages. And apparently they've been in Ace XR for a long time. I just never knew it. I did my first Steel Challenge last week. I had a lot of fun doing it. There's definitely no moving, it's just all shooting. There is one stage where you go from one box to the next box after two shots. And it's literally you jumping over five feet so not a lot of movement, but there is some. And this is where this headset and this training really, really can help. So if you're a steel challenge um, competitor, this is a must, I feel like. You literally, especially if you're using rimfire, because this thing has more recoil than rimfire. And it's just amazing at how well you can get practice on doing your transitions and how you want to do it. Like, do you want to go one two swing all the way over and come back and then stop plate or do you want to kind of do this and try and get that and try and get that stop plate here or try and get that third target here on your way over and just kind of getting the cadence down that's kind of an important part of this One more time. I'm sick Stand of this by. frame rate, to be honest. That's better. So a 992 is a platinum, and I guess ranked, or competitive, or however you want to describe it. And that puts me in the top 100 at 76. Whereas, like, my other score is an 1192, which is a diamond that put me in, like, the top 10, I think. Yeah, top 10. Man. Man. So you just have the option to do all of these steel challenge um, stages. And like, here's the accelerator. So you really can just constantly practice your transitions and then finishing on your stop plate and just kind of getting the rhythm and the cadence down that you need to do while you're doing steel challenge. So steel challenge, for those who don't know, it's five steel plates. One of those steel plates is the stop plate. So you shoot all four steel plates first, and then your last shot has to be on the stop plate. There's penalties if you hit the stop plate before you clear all the other plates, etc. You can look the rules up on your own. A lot of people use rimfire for this. And rimfire is a cheap ammo to shoot, 22 long rifle. Uh, the pistols and the rifles are cheap to get into. Ammo cost is a fraction of what it is to shoot center fire. So these are really, really common to start competition shooting and just new shooters i always recommend start with rimfire there's basically no recoil it's easy to shoot it's still fun to shoot and it can help especially for a newer shooter to not be scared or for lack of a better word of shooting larger calibers later on you can get a lot of good fundamentals by using rimfire and a lot of good safety can start with rimfire pistols for much cheaper than jumping straight into the center fire world because Competition center fire pistols can be a lot more expensive. Whereas these Rugers, you can find them used for great deals and the ammo is abundantly cheap for what you get. With that being said, these eight stages are in Ace XR. 
there's basically no recoil and rimfire anyways. When I do this and I'm going through shooting those five steel plates, it feels like I'm doing like a rimfire pistol. I use the inside the game, I use the open gun because it does have the less, least amount of muzzle flip in game. So it simulates more like using a rimfire. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I can already feel that after I spent a couple hours doing the different steel challenge stages that I had never really done before, my times are improving. And I know that if I go out there and I'm using rimfire and I'm doing those stages, I am definitely going to improve my times after sitting in Ace XR and practicing. If you are a steel challenge shooter, it is worth it to buy this. Hands down, hands down. There's no other way around it. If you are serious about steel challenge and you're using handguns in steel challenge, you should go out and find an Oculus Quest 2 or 3, buy it, buy the game, get it shipped to you, get the annual subscription, go on their website. I think they have, they always have some kind of discount for first responders, military, and I think there's a few others on there and get this now. Stop watching my video, go buy it now. I'm just telling you, if you're serious about Steel Challenge, you will notice that you will improve drastically by doing this. You can still do the dry fire, like, cause I do uh, carry optics in Steel Challenge also. So it's nice to have this double action trigger and I can kind of go through, do my five shots with the CZ, but then also I can use this to simulate. It's not the same grip angle, but it's pretty damn close uh, to my 2245 light by Ruger, the Mark IV. Um, I, I did not even fathom how well this system could work for competition shooting until I tried Steel Challenge last week. Okay, so for the conclusion on this, um, the price and the benefit of it. It is not cheap, but ammo is not cheap either. Even hand loading my own ammo, I think I'm at like, I don't know, 16, 17 cents um, per cartridge. Uh, and that's, that's not cheap compared to Rimfire. And if you're buying factory ammo, it's even more expensive. So it doesn't take long to get to that total cost of what it is to get the headset and the uh, Ace XR. It won't take long to get to that and just ammo costs. I promise you it won't. Um, but for those that are averted to it, then yeah, dry fire will still work for you. Um, if all you're doing is USPSA, I would be more hesitant on it's gonna help you a lot more. I know that seems weird that I just had a great endorsement for steel challenge unless you have the ability to get out and move around you get out of this system what you put into it and if you're not willing to put a lot into it then you probably won't benefit you as much for uspsa uh, and it's definitely not going to benefit you at all for like self-defense training or anything like that or drawing from concealment if if you're not doing competitive shooting this is not for you it's designed for competitive shooters other than that it's a lot of fun if you do steel challenge you should have already bought it by the time you're at this point in the video. You should have paused it. You should have gone over their website. You should have bought it if you're serious and it's still challenged. Go now. You should have bought it. As I've said before, the staff over at the Ace XR, the developers, the customer support, they're awesome. They're a great bunch of guys. They've made a great product and they keep updating it. That's the key part. They didn't just say, hey, buy the subscription. Here's the game. Have fun. Play. That's it. They are updating it every month they're adding new stages they're adding new fun games like the drone attacks and the zombie attacks that they even have a squad car in there now that you've seen some of the footage that i've been rolling through here so they are going to keep developing it and i know people hate that subscription model i think it's like 200 dollars a year or something that's nothing it's nothing you know how easy it is to go through 200 dollars worth of ammo in one range session just running drills it's pretty easy. And at this rate, the product's only gonna continue to improve. When I first got in, there wasn't a whole lot and I was still willing to spend the money to get the product. Now at this point in December, my founding member subscription will end and I will be renewing. Thank you everybody for coming by. I really enjoy doing this. I passed a thousand subscribers, that's awesome. You guys are amazing. Have fun, bye.